In this video, I'm going to show you the tuple methods count and index and how to use sequence operations on tuples. As you can see here, I have a variable my underscore tuple containing a tuple with the values 1, 3.4, and high, showing that they are heterogeneous, meaning that they can contain multiple data types in a single tuple. And the first thing that I'll show you is how to access an element using indexing. If you remember from lists, indexing is using a set of square brackets and then putting the index of the element that you want. In this case, I want the element high here, which if we count from zero, we have zero, one, two. So it is the second index. So if I put two in here and I run this, it is going to output high to the console. Now, if I tried to change this, so instead of equaling high, it now equals hello. We'll see that even before I run it, Visual Studio Code is telling me that something's wrong. But if I try to run this, I get a syntax error. Expression cannot contain assignment. This is because tuples are immutable. Once they have been created, you cannot change them. You cannot modify any of the elements in them. You can also slice to get a subset of elements from a tuple. So if I wanted, say, just 1 and 3.14, I would put in a 0, colon, and then 2. This indicates that I want to start at the beginning of the tuple and go up to, but not include the second index. So that's going to get this index zero and this index one and return a tuple containing those elements. And if I run that, we'll see that I have my tuple one and 3.14 down here. And if I wanted to add the optional step in, I could do another colon and tell it that I want every other element. And I'll put a zero in on the left side of the first colon to start at the beginning of the tuple and a three to make sure that I can iterate over all the elements in this tuple, and my two to say that I want every other element, so I only get one and high back. And if I run that, we'll see that I get the tuple containing one and high. The next thing I want to show you is packing, which is basically just creating a tuple. So if I create a variable called my other tuple, and I set it to be the values one, two, and three, I am packing these values into this variable creating a tuple. And if I output my other tuple here, we'll see that we have the tuple one, two, and three. Now you can also unpack a tuple. So if I wanted to, I could say a comma b comma c equals my other tuple. And what this is going to do is it is going to take the three elements that are in my other tuple, one, two, and three, and put them into my three variables that I've created here, a, b, and c. So one's going to go to a, two is going to go to b, and three is going to go to c. And down here in the print function, if I output A, B, and C, we will see that. I get 1, 2, and 3, and you'll notice that there are no parentheses around here because these are individual integers now. Now, if I tried to add a fourth variable in here, even though my tuple only contains three elements, it will give me a value error because there's not enough values to unpack. And if I only tried to use two elements with my tuple that has three elements, it will give me a value error telling me that there are too many values to unpack. So make sure if you are unpacking that you use the correct number of variables for your tuple. We can also join two tuples together using the addition operator. So if I were to put in my tuple plus my other tuple and pass that into a variable that I will call con tuple, short for concatenated tuple, and then down here in the print function, output the elements of con tuple. When I run this, we will get one, 3.4 high, and one, two, three, since both of these tuples are now joined together. I'm going to go ahead and move these up into my tuple just to make the next part a little easier, make more sense. I'm going to remove that. And I will show you how to use the count and index methods. So the count method is used by typing in your tuple variable dot count. And if I hover over this, we'll see that it returns a number of occurrences of value and it takes one argument for value. In count here, I am going to pass it two. So I wanna count how many times this value is in this tuple. If I run this, I'll get the output one because there's only one two here. And if I were to pass in the value one and run this, we'll see that I get two for this one here and this one here. You can also use the index method. So if I get rid of count and put in index, I'll mouse over this and it'll tell us that it returns the first index of value and it raises a value error if the value is not present. 
It takes a value and an optional start and stop. So if I wanted to only search through this portion here, I would put in one for the start and five for the stop. So if I search for, let's say the value three, and I put in my start of one and my stop of five, I get an error because it's saying that it's not in the tuple because this stop here is non-inclusive. So three here is at index five, but because this is non-inclusive, it is stopping here at two. So if I were to change this to a six and then look for the index of three, it's going to output five because that is the index here. And if I wanted to search the entire tuple, I would only pass one value in. So if I wanted to see where high was, where the first occurrence of it was, I would put in just high and I get the output of two, which if we count, we have zero, one, two. We can also repeat the sequence that's in a tuple using the multiplication operator. So if I change my tuple to just be one, two, and three, and I tell this to multiply that by three, this is going to repeat this sequence three times. And when I run this, I'm going to get a tuple containing one, two, three, three times. And down here, we'll see that I have this tuple, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 